In this video, I will be challenging myself to practice Bach's B major Prelude and Fugue, second book of the WTC, in only one hour, and then record it for real. And while I'm practicing, I'll invite myself over there to say something hopefully useful about the score, notation, even tempo. Let's talk about the score first, because I know many of you are struggling a little bit when you see a score thing. There seems to be nothing on the score that guides you into, for instance, what tempo could Bach possibly had in mind. Well, let's have a look if we can figure out some elements, because the score is actually pretty clear. There is something like a middle tempo for each notation. Well, that sounds really difficult. It's not so hard to understand. Let's have a look at this notation here. Common time, which is just the same as 4-4. Four, four. You see 16th notes, and this is a very normal looking piece. If you play the Bach's first invention, for instance, similar pattern. Well, if you have a piece with a normal notation like this in 4-4, four, four, then the tempo is around the tempo ordinario, which is quarter note 60. Just for you to know that there are a lot of sources in the 18th, 17th and also even 19th century that uses quarter note 60 as the middle tempo. And we are looking at a score that represents that notation. Common time, 4-4, four, four, 16th notes as fast as structural note value. That's what leads you to the tempo ordinario. Well, there are other things to consider. The harmonic pattern, the harmonic density, so to say, is also very normal. We see a very open structure here. Also here at the beginning, this all be major. And now you can say, I will never figure that out. Yes, you will figure that out. I'll put on screen a piece that has a completely different notation and a much denser harmonic structure. And you will easily see that. Now, when you have more harmonic density, you go a little slower. When you have faster note values, you go a little slower. So, but here that's not the case. However, we know from our solfege lessons that when you have 4-4, four, four, which beats do get the heavy accent? Yes, 1 and 3 get the down accent, and 2 and 4 the up beat. But guess what Bach is doing here? You get the trill on the second beat and another on the fourth. Hey, if I give a trill at the second beat of this bar, there is an accent here. I cannot avoid that. And so you might say we have four accents here. We have four more or less down beats. Now that doesn't happen in the entire piece so the influence of this might be minor but if you consider that to be important you can also take a little slower tempo now we had harmonic density as first notation and there is a third thing which is the character of the piece now what kind of piece are we talking about here is this a piece that you would describe as a very serious or very joyful is this a piece in which you could imagine two youngsters playing around or two somewhat older men sitting on a bench talking about the things of life but not in a too dramatic way it's not that this music needs to represent that but you have to think about that in this case this piece to me is not very dramatic it's not very very joyful it's calm it's enjoyable it are maybe just two adults walking around in the forest and just having a conversation with each other about their kids everything is going okay this however is something that you can figure out yourself and so fun to do but it's also important because the character of the piece also determines your tempo when you say, okay, I think this piece is a little bit serious, then you could say this is an andante. Now, Bach didn't mark that here. He doesn't, he, did, he didn't give any tempo indication whatsoever. But in this style, in that time, this doesn't imply that Bach didn't have something in mind. He just trusted you for figuring that out. And oftentimes this is pretty clear or the range in which you can make a kind of interpretation is pretty clear. Or you can say, no, I think the topic they discuss is a little bit more joyful. Well, then you have an allegro. Well, in this case, with the second and fourth beat, I would say it's more towards an andante, but 
you can have a nice conversation about that with a glass of wine or here in Belgium I would invite you to drink a Belgian beer if you've never had one those are excellent but just one because with the second I can promise you you're not used to drink Belgian beer everything will become allegro and even more than allegro of the Andante just takes your tempo a little down, the impact of the Allegro takes your tempo a little up. You can even say I stick around 60 and I play with a little bit more lighter touch, a little bit more articulation and my articulation lifts the piece to an Allegro movement. So these tempo differences are very minor. Uh, I, I would say you can go to 72, 78 ish and in this case you can go to 52 it's just a fork you know you can go lower you can go higher it's something also for me that needs to develop more than just one hour some things only reveal after a while but that's as a little bit the range i wouldn't go much higher than 72 76 certainly not in this piece i know today many baroque orchestras are taking tempi that are just like over the edge but those tempi really didn't exist in the 18th century don't shoot me for that. I just believe they didn't. Anyways, if we move on to the fugue real quick, if you compare the notation with this, what do you see as a difference? Exactly, 16th notes, no 16th notes. Here we have common time. Here we have alla breve. And so alla breve is the double of common time, double and tempo. But there is one caveat though, you double the tempo, yes, but you have the note value. I know many of you calculate very quickly and you will say right now, Wim, if this is correct, then alla breve is similar tempo as common time, because I double the tempo and I have the note value. And my answer to that question will be, yes, you're right. Alla breve is the same tempo as common time. Don't kill me for that, because I know many today say that's not true. Alla breve is an absolute term twice as fast, but it's actually not true. Again, the sources for this, but that's for another time. What's typical? For a normal alla breve, we don't have four beats in the bar, we have two, two half notes. One that gets one down, a down beat and the other gets an up beat. And so here, that should be the normal pattern, but there are some things that are a little different. For instance, here you have 16th notes. Didn't I tell you that an alla breve, in the pure sense, does not have 16th notes? Yes. So this is really something that you should pay attention to because this affects the tempo. If we have our double tempo compared to the tempo ordinario for the common time, it's getting complex, I know. It's actually very simple. Then we go from quarter note 60 to half note 6. Very easy, right? But that tempo doesn't work for here. I will take a slower tempo. I already know that you don't because you haven't heard the result of the challenge. Obviously I have played that already so I know the result and I will be playing much slower because of obvious reasons. But the question is would I take a tempo that is close to half note 60 later on when I really practice this like decent? And I don't know. I don't think so. I think my tempo for this piece now Quote me on that later. It's just for now, after touching upon it, I think my tempo in modern reading will be something around 72, maybe 80, but I don't think I will be playing much faster, exactly because of those 16th notes, but also measures like these. These are very complex for a normal alla breve. They almost feel like a very fast or a faster 4-4.
And now that's the final thing I will say about Alabre. This piece could have been also an Alabre. When Bach had used Alabre here, what he actually meant was a little faster than common time. Often today, you will hear that Alla Breve is double the tempo no matter what, but it's related to the notation. When an Alla Breve sign uses 16th notes, then the implication is not that you double the tempo, you just speed up a little bit. This becomes really important going forward to the end of the 18th century and early 19th century, Beethoven, Chopin, and even later music. But that's for another time. Okay, this is what's going to happen. I will fail. So I will try to survive.
Okay, there you have it. It's absolutely not okay. Yes, that guy was way too exhausted to make a decent outro for a video like this one. I recorded that around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. The entire evening I was completely gone. I just... <laughs> still today as you can hear you want another challenge there is the a minor prelude and fugue already on the channel on organ it's a beautiful video by the way it's the introduction video of the channel so if you haven't seen that go and click on this thumbnail because you don't want to miss that i guess no i'm sure i'm convinced yes you want to see that go ahead Click on that. See you over there. Thanks for watching.